Welcome back to Man Across New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling. I shall we see what's going on on our lovely island of Fond Hollow today. As we'll just be vibing out per usual. What should we talk about? You know what, actually, what was actually an interesting thing, which I could have talked about yesterday, but instead I talked about um, skipping rope. Because, um, I don't know, skipping rope, I'm be honest, skipping rope's kind of fun. At least from what I remember. I, I can't say, I don't even know what the last time I skipped rope is. But anyway, um, you know, there was this whole story about basically like Riot Games sort of being like hacked, quote, quote. Although, you know, people very much like to sort of like loosely use a word hacked in situations, which is, um, it's so sort of, I'm not going to say it's a wrong usage of a word hacked, as I understand it, but it's sort of like a, it gives off a wrong connotation, I think, due to popular media. But anyway, we'll get into it in a second. Good evening, everyone. Right now, I'm 400 at 7.17 p.m. on Thursday, January 26, 2023. Oh, today's also Vivian's birthday. Happy birthday. Um, but like, but uh, yeah, um, just due to popular culture and the, the definition of hacked has, you know, been stretched quite a lot, I suppose, comparatively to what it should mean or shouldn't mean. I suppose, you know, that sort of mileage is kind of like up to you to decide necessarily. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about like CSI and CIS. Everyone knows that scene from... Um, and I think it's CSI where like we get two people like typing on the keyboard going like I'm being hacked and then someone's having something and then we just unplug the computer to solve it which you know people like to use that as sort of like a a state of like not a state but like um an example of derision or mockery which and really if anything it's kind of doing the opposite I think I think it's like sort of like an aware joke I'm I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure it is if it's not an aware joke then it's probably the most like <laughs> amusing unaware joke in, in in existence but I'm, I'm pretty sure the writers knew what they were doing like it, even if you are not that comp if you are just have like an awareness ish of computers I think you probably are aware enough to be like yeah that doesn't really make sense but it's kind of funny so you know you, you do it anyway it's kind of you know just like throw some stuff at the wall and kind of see what sticks in like an amusing way but anyway um if you, if you didn't hear right games got hacked quote quote um by some malicious wrongdoers i suppose but it isn't hacked in the sense that you might imagine as i understand it um I, I might not get the story completely right but um it's not hacking like they hacked into the servers or whatever they bypassed like the firewalls etc no one does. i mean bypassing firewalls is not really what i say i'm as you can tell i'm, I'm not very like I'm not in cybersecurity, so I, I don't really know that much about it. But I, I did study a little bit of like that sort of thing uh, during university time. But it's been a hot minute since I've done that. But um, yeah, as I understand it, it was like a spearfish attack or something, wasn't it? Where it was like a phishing link was like sent out, and then um, someone clicked on it, and then they got access to like source code or something, or part of the source code of a game or something. Um, not all of it. If it was all of it, then you know. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily how bad that would be um because i'm again i'm not an expert in that sort of field or area but maybe it's not that bad if, it, if you know they get access to the entirety of source code <laughs> maybe that's bad to say but um it's a sort of thing like e even if you had the source code to league of legends i suppose like for one of it i, I think it's an ongoing mean but it's kind of like spaghetti coded i don't think it's entirely spaghetti coded but you know i'm, I'm sure there's not all pra best practices in there a lot of it best of like overhauling old systems etc etc but um I'm sure at the same time, like, a, a lot of the fact of League is, you know, more than just its code, I suppose. Not to say that, you know, it, you should just give out any code you make, like, willy-nilly, I suppose. You know, there's reasons that things are protected, I suppose, in industry, etc., etc. But, um, as I understand it, you know, someone fell for basically the oldest trick in book where they, you know, got clicked onto a phishing link and, or something. And then, yeah. Now, but the only reason I think this made much... More, more in the way of news is because apparently the people who actually hacked them were just you know went to Ryan and was like hey we want like I don't know if it was like 10 million dollars or we're gonna leak your source code on the internet and then Riot were unsurprisingly like uh no do it man <laughs> we don't care um well it's not they don't care of course they, they probably you know I'd imagine look into like cyber security messages make sure that nothing's going like completely awry etc etc but Unsurprisingly, they were just, you know, they were quite a titan in the industry, you might want to say. Um, so they were quite unswayed by that. But it's interesting, you know, hacking and all that, and like in its portrayal in media, etc. I'm not like, like, as I said, an expert in hacking. I'm, I'm not going to say I don't know the first thing about hacking. Well, I mean, technically, I, I should I should theoretically know a little bit about cybersecurity, because as I said, I've done like modules on like um, coding and cryptography. Um 
coding not as in the programming certain sort of coding but like encoding things uh etc etc so I, I do know some like things like attacks and vulnerabilities and that sort of thing but obviously nothing which i would ever apply to the real world and nothing which would work in the real world because it was basically like a 101 um but, but it's interesting to think and hear about i suppose like is how different this portrayal is you know because I, I remember i can't i, I say I remember clearly i don't remember as well enough but i think i was doing like an idea lesson or something i had back in the school about learning about the existence of like um white hat hackers which are basically sort of people used to test you over cyber security just be like how difficult like how how well secured is your cyber <laughs> no like um but you basically pay them and be like all right try and break into the system any way you can and then they'll do whatever they can you know bypassing etc etc is like finding vulnerabilities um you know spoofing addresses and certificates <laughs> yeah okay I'm, I'm sort of out of my depth here with what i'm saying but you know stuff like that and um yeah like fr through that um you can i suppose like find vulnerabilities in um your system and like find out like things that you need to like patch up and like what where where the weak link is um which is all well and good like don't get me wrong all, all that stuff is well and good but isn't it also like the sort of golden rule about these sort of things in first place is the weakest vulnerability is always the human being rather than computer no okay maybe not always true Maybe that's not always true, but it's a it's a thing of like I can't remember. Is that like con artist or something? Where it's basically just like um, you know you, you could like learn how to pick a lock. You could learn how to like you know <laughs> you you could learn how to like pick a lock or like whatever break into a safe etc etc etc. But really the easiest way is just to like um, you know trick someone <laughs> into giving you the passcode or whatever. Um, maybe not necessarily the easiest way, but. It's a lot easier than, you know, certain other things, <laughs> shall we say. And at least that's what I sort of gathered from Real Hustle, is that humans are very susceptible to any sort of deception and uh, misinformation. And any sort of misleading, I suppose, knowledge in the first place. So, you know, it, it, it is a weak link. Or if you watch, like, you know, any sort of heist movie. <laughs> but there's always someone's role who is is to, like, get the information out of a person, or, like, to trick a person, etc, etc, you know. Um... I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Like Oceans, did it happen in Ocean's Eleven? Probably not. But I can, yeah, you know, they, they had that guy like impersonating like some rich East European person and g giving like crystals for safekeeping. That sounds about right. Um, that was something we watched recently. Heist, heist movies are great fun. I'm not gonna lie. Ocean's Eleven, did it, it almost certainly happened in uh, Now You See Me, which is you know sort of like a, a heist movie, I guess, but it's like m magic based kind of. <laughs> it, it's a great fun great fun watch i think to be to be honest you know you might hate hate on it for being highly unrealistic but it's like ah you know i don't really care i'm just kind of everyone you know and i see it i, I said this before you know if like, i see it as like the dexterity version of an action movie you know if it, I, action movies are very much strength as i mean stat you know heist movies in, the, in this case and now you see me is very much de dexterity um version of it um okay i also forgot that it's vivian's birthday so we should probably do this before we get we should pick up an a fruit not native to this island and then we should go and wrap it and then give it to her because for whatever reason the animals they go wild forever like whoa fruit which is just like growing right outside my door can't get enough of it which is fair enough you know i mean fruit is tasty but yeah um i was hacking stuff like, i feel like i'm not sure if this is like a fabricated memory i have in my mind but i had like a workshop about hacking things or something or like i i, I took like some basic like 101 hacking like white white hat hacking mind you not i'm not breaking into like discover state secrets or anything actually you know nothing about it wasn't it the thing like recently like a no fly list or something got like leaked for like an american airline I, I don't really know which is just wild how that happens but i'm not even going to delve into that at all because i know nothing about it essentially but i feel like i took a course or like a workshop or something at some point which is basically like an intro in, into hacking i don't remember it at all like the things about it but i I feel like it was something I did online. I can't remember. Maybe it was part of like Code Academy or something. No, that can't be right. It was definitely some sort of like online exercise where I had to like hack into something. I mean, the only thing I remember was like um like spoofing like a username and password and um like bypassing the check because obviously when you put username and password in um what their servers do is it checks it against their database and goes like hey does this match up but they don't match you know straight up username to username password to password because that is a horrible way to store passwords because should your database ever get leaked you have just leaked out all of the personal details of your um customers so don't do that um it, it's often like hashed or assaulted and uh, 
yeah, I think it's hash is the right word. I think hash and salted might be the same thing. I don't really know actually the difference between them, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, but it's basically just like encoded way of storing them. I remember to check, are the encodings the same? Um, but there is a way of like spoofing that. So and then, like uh, the server checks that. I mean, it will send back a reply being like, yes, this is fine. Let them on through. Uh, or they'll send a reply be like, this is wrong. Deny them access. And there was like a thing where like I I I spoof like a way to pretend um, that that like check was like correct rather than wrong. Um, I don't remember how I, I... I feel like I made this up because this memory feels different from other memories. You know? Oftentimes you... I recall other memories. I, I recall them with, you know, a certain, like... They, they have a certain feeling to them, I suppose. This one just feels very different. Which I, which makes me feel like... I think it might have been a dream, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> it, it, I generally can't even tell. So I, I don't know if it, if it was, if, if it's happened. Am I... Is this a real life? Or is this just a fantasy? Um, caught in a landslide, no escape from reality, all that good stuff. All bad stuff, I suppose, depending on how you look at it. Um, I don't know. But it's just like, I feel like I'm losing it. <laughs> Did this happen? Anyway. Because part of me also feels like it was one of those website things where it was like those puzzly-esque websites where you, you know, like, uh, I can't remember what it is, that like that hard, super hard like internet riddle thing where you had to like, you start off at a website and then like the answer to the first question is like the next URL and then it goes it's like 50 like layers deep and it's like supremely supremely hard or something like that I don't really recall I'm gonna be honest but it's something like that or, or it was a dream I'm not really sure <laughs> but I, I feel like I remember it happening I feel like I sort of vaguely remember what that like fake website looked like I don't, I don't know I, I genuinely don't even know where I got this from anyway um so what, what other things did I learn about like sort of hacking I suppose that's um, that I, I learned about vulnerabilities mainly in like encodings and that sort of things like um let me try and think uh I, I can't remember what this one was called I don't think it was called a middleman attack but um no it can't, it can't be called because like middleman is when someone just intercepts something but um basically oh actually you know there, there's multiple things I suppose going on here um well one time I took like a computer science like taster course I suppose for university thing and I remember one like section I had. Did I really pick up recipe? Where is it? One section I had was uh, basically about like cybersecurity and that sort of thing. And they basically were just like, okay, how? Imagine you wanted to give like an envelope with a secret like password in it to your friend. Well, you know, in real life, you you can give it. You can just like put it in the envelope and give it over to your friend, and you'll be fine. But you know, this is cyber. This is like the cyberspace or whatever. You know, it's not. It's not something you're physically in exchanging so how would you do it securely and then most people are just like oh you know you put it in the envelope and you just pass it over and we're like oh but what if someone intercepts it and like to give a physical example it's like instead of giving uh, the envelope directly to friend b if you're alice you can't give it directly to bob um person charlie or something comes into the middle and grabs the envelope for you now because if the thing's not secured you know and charlie can just like read the password and now has all the specific details that you wanted to keep hidden from random strangers etc etc so what do you do and then you know the most common thing is other people are like is like okay um i say other people because in that our group had the answer because actually one person in our group knew the answer already not not me um i didn't know anything about like computers and stuff that time i think um you're just like you want to put a lock on it i was like okay but if you put a lock on it then you give it to charlie and well, charlie can't open it anymore so charlie gives it to bob anyway and then bob can't open it anymore so what do you do now it's just like oh you know and you think about it and well the answer is um basically is you put like imagine you, it's a lock box now because you can't really lock an envelope is it, you have a lock box you put your own you put your secret password in there close a close the lock box put your lock, lock on it which only you know the combination to you give it um, you try to hand it over to Bob. Charlie can intercept. Charlie will look at it and be like, I can't open this. And then, you know, unless Charlie wants to like completely stop Bob from receiving a message, in which case that will raise several alarm flags, um, Charlie will hand it over to Bob anyway. Or maybe Charlie will just only be able to look at it rather than actually be able to physically handle it or something, something. I don't know, the metaphor falls apart if you, don't, if you think about it too much. Well, Bob can't open it now, but it's okay because Bob has his own lock, which he can also now put on the lock box and then give it back. And even though it goes through Charlie again, Charlie still can't open it because not only can they not open one lock, they can, definitely cannot open two. Um, and then hands it back to you, Alice. And then Alice, you know, or you, I suppose can now take off your original lock and then give it back and now you know same same deal with charlie bob now has the, the 
a box with a secret password in, but now locked with a lock, which you can open. And then boom, you can open it. That, that, that's basically 101 of how you um, securely transfer like information to a number, which is why prime numbers are such a big thing, by the way, um, if you don't know. Because that's that's basically what a lot, lot like like a 101 version of like, by the way, if I'm explaining this wrong and you're an expert in the field, fair enough, you can feel free to correct me or whatever. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to take offense to that about or anything. I'm just parroting what I know. I'm, I'm sure all my videos are full of misinformation, but I, I, I do my best to preface that. I'm not an expert. Um, but but it's, that's basically like the exchange of information, you know, number, um, not numbers, information is exchange in the digital world through uh, ones and zeros, quite literally, and this is converted into like some bits and then it's sent, sent across. But of course, if you, if you want to send it across the internet, anyone could just like sort of like tap into your connection, or maybe not anyone can, but people can just tap into your connection and be like, hey, what's this? Uh, obviously, you kind of don't really want that to happen, to be perfectly honest. You kind of like, hey, I, I kind of want only the person who I want to see it, to see it. Um, well, why don't you take your number, you know, multiply it by a big old prime number, and then send it off again. And then, you know, the, the person, you know, the Charlie the Interceptor, the middleman, will look at that and be like, okay, you know, I can try and, like, figure out what, what, an, well, I, I, actually, I think you multiply it by, like, two prime numbers, I can't really remember. Basically, it's a big old number. And then Charlie knows they have to divide it by something to get, like, the original message, or what have you. But because it's a prime number, they, because they can only divide by that prime number. If you don't know how prime numbers work, but the only thing about prime numbers are divisible by are one and themselves. Um, so it's never divisible by, like, a smaller factor. So they basically have to search all the numbers in existence, kind of, um, to find this prime number, um, to divide the encrypt your encrypted message that you sent. And then to try and find the original message, which is, I'm going to say in a non-mathematical sense, really, really difficult and time consuming. These are big numbers we're talking about here. So, you know, that's basically the equivalent of lock. And then, you know, it gets given, um, Bob receives a message and then Bob like multiplies his own prime number and then like sends it back. And then you can divide, take your, take um, the encrypted message that Bob sent you and divide by your prime number. And then, you know, you're good. Um, and that, that's basically the, the lockbox metaphor, but like um, in real life. We're also going to go get uh, a shovel right now. Um, no, and that's basically just how it works. That's how like, you know, a basic encryption works. Um, but I remember one of the attacks that you could do on it is if you could figure out... I can't remember exactly, but it, it's something basically you intercept it. But instead of us passing on the message as normal, you pass on the message like multiplied by your own number. And if you do it in a, a clever way by like w working with modular arithmetic, I think. I can't really remember off the top of my head. You can end up like really like messing people's like transactions up. Like if a bank sent an encrypted transaction to be like, "Hey, this person has um, withdrawn ten pounds or something." Well, you if someone intercepts it and like multiplies it by just the right thing, you know, end up you know the message being received is like, "Hey, this person has received uh, withdrawn one thousand pounds or something." And you know, of course, and the bank will just be like, "Well, that's a legitimate message that we got and everything," um, and be none the wiser to the whole deal. So there's a very terrible version of cybersecurity, not even 101, it's more like cybersecurity 0.4, and <laughs> 0.4 is a bit generous as well, I mean, cybersecurity 0.1 probably makes the joke land a bit better, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, I don't know, that's basically what I know, or what I remember from it. Anyway, I don't really know where I was getting with this. Cybersecurity? Is that is that what today's episode is going to be called? It's not really about cybersecurity, but I'm going to be honest. Like, <laughs> as I said, I'm not I'm not really well, all that well versed in it in the first place. So that makes it um, a little bit silly for me to sort of like not presume things about, but talk about it in that sense in the first place. No, <laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. At the very least, I hope it was mildly amusing. Anyway, I'm going to round off this episode here. So if you haven't been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscriptions, shares are greatly appreciated. Twitter, Discord down below. Hope we can see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until, until next time, I was going to say until now. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>